struggled a bit more than uh, I hoped I would to, to, to not uh, shed a few tears in there. I think particularly uh, what I'm feeling right now, and I felt this when I was thanking people who, without whom I would not have lasted any time as, as First Minister. You know, ultimately, the job that I do is the highest office in the land, but it's still fundamentally about people, and the hardest part of this decision is the people I'm going to miss, not First seeing every single day. Sorry. First Minister, um, Certainly some emotion, no tears quite, but do you leave with any regrets? Oh look, you know, show me a human being or a politician or a, a government minister uh, that doesn't have regrets and I show you somebody that's not properly human. What's your biggest one? Uh, look, I'm not going to do that today. No there, independence? Uh, I would love to have been the leader who took Scotland's independence, but I think I've said this to many of you as well. For me, I campaigned for independence literally since I was 16 years old. For me, independence is much, 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 much more important than the person who lives is there, and I have no doubt Scotland will become independent. So, you know, I'll have time uh, to reflect at leisure on my time in office. I'm sure many of you will continue to reflect on that time. I'm proud. I won't go through them. I've, I've said in there some of the things I'm proud of. Uh, this has been a privilege. It's been a privilege every single day. You know, I have led Scotland through a period in our history that nobody would have chosen. Covid shaped the country, I, I think in ways that we probably don't yet fully understand. It shaped me, it has undoubtedly changed me as a person, and I think when we look back it will be seen to have defined my, my time as First Minister. So, you know, and that created that really difficult time for everybody, and I've said before, my job is not the toughest in the country by any stretch of the imagination. But I felt during that period a bond with the Scottish people uh, that sustained me, and I hope it helped the country through. Do you have regrets about how the party's been led? Uh, no, I have great confidence in the future of my party. Um, I think I alluded to this in there, but I didn't tell the full story. Forgive me if some of you have heard this story before. I, I went to my first ever SNP meeting in the volunteer rooms in Irvine, in the Cunningham South constituency in 1986. And I always remember that meeting, because it was my first. But there was, everybody knew it was on that high, because the, is there anybody here from the Herald? System 3 opinion poll had come out that day, and we were at 12%. And the reason everybody was on a high, it was the first time in ages we'd been in other things. My party has come such a long way, and it's come such a long way through hard work, serving Scotland, and being a team, solidarity and, and unity. And, you know, even in the last few days when there's been hyperbolic phrases used about collapse and all sorts of things, you look at most opinion polls and they still show the SNP way ahead of anyone else. Now, my successor should not take that for granted. I have never taken that for granted. But I have real confidence in whoever my successor is to continue to build on the success of the party and the government. But to do that, they must remain focused on the interests and the priorities of people across the country. Okay, thank you all. Thank you. 